professional skepticism, still on evidence. Something else we'll need to look at is materiality. And something else we are going to look at is something we refer to as assurance engagement risk. Assurance engagement risk. Then from there, we can look on what we refer to as item number five, and that is assurance report. In assurance report, we are going to be looking two types of assurance. One is reasonable assurance, and number two is limited assurance. There. From there, we can now go ahead and look about an assurance engagement. Let me start with this word, evidence. When you are collecting, when you are collecting evidence, we say you are collecting information. In simple terms, when we are trying to define the term information or evidence, we say it is information, and this information is obtained or collected by the practitioner, by practitioner. The information obtained by the practitioner has the purpose of forming a conclusion to all in arriving at a conclusion, at a conclusion. On whose basis he forms an assurance? On whose basis he forms an assurance. So this one, I won't discuss it in detail right now because we are coming to a whole topic of audit evidence and we are going to be using the same, same definition. We'll be saying when you collect information to arrive at a conclusion, that conclusion will help you to come up with a what? With an opinion. That is what we refer to as what? Evidence. But when you are collecting evidence, the rule is very simple. You need to plan and perform the engagement in a manner that you are going to collect sufficient and appropriate evidence. Sufficient and appropriate evidence. So the procedures that you are going to use in gathering audit evidence should be properly timed, should be properly maybe designed, and they should allow you to gather sufficient and appropriate evidence. Sufficiency in auditing we refer this one as the quantity of evidence. Appropriateness means the quality of evidence. So when you are looking at the sufficiency and appropriateness, we are looking about the quantity and quality of evidence. When we are looking whether we are going to gather quantitative or maybe qualitative evidence, we look on a number of factors. One of the factors that we consider is this one. We usually say whenever a practitioner is gathering evidence, he has to approach each and every subject matter with a professional skepticism or with a mind of doubt. So this time, we need to go ahead and look on a number of factors. One, factors that influence may be what we refer to as what? Refer to as evidence. One of that is professional skepticism. Professional skepticism. Professional skepticism, you can either decide to use a K, it is still acceptable, or you can use a C, it is still acceptable. But the word skeptic, skeptical means doubt. Some people say approaching each and everything with a questioning mind. Questioning mind. So the rule is very simple in professional skepticism. We say the rule of professional skepticism requires that any practitioner approach each and every subject matter with a questioning mind. So it is, it is, or you can say it means an attitude, an attitude with a questioning mind, with a questioning mind. So everything you approach, approach it with a questioning mind. Recognizing that 
the subject matter information may be materially misstated. Recognizing that the subject matter information could be materially could be materially misstated. That's how we define that particular term. So many students, even those who are doing advanced or those who are doing auditing one, have had a problem to define the word professional skepticism. But it's a very simple term. You have an attitude of questioning each and every item. Whenever you go to the hospital to visit, to visit your friend who is a doctor, most of the time he will have a doubt that you have come just to say hi. The doubt for him means that he has to check you. It is very, very important if you are a doctor, whenever a friend comes to visit you, you approach your friend with an attitude of questioning mind because he may be sick and maybe you are going to save life at that moment. The same case applies to auditing. In auditing and assurance, as well as in assurance engagement, whenever we find a subject matter, we cannot just go ahead and say that the subject matter looks okay. It can never be okay. The rule number one, if you come across a subject matter or subject matter information, is to check or maybe to raise doubt. And then the next is to gather evidence and eliminate the doubt. Once you eliminate the doubt in that particular area, you can go ahead and say, now I have sufficient evidence. So one of the factors to consider maybe when you are gathering evidence or when you are considering the nature, extent and timing of the audit evidence that you are going to be gathering is professional skepticism. Professional skepticism by definition means an attitude of a, an attitude of a questioning mind recognizing that the subject matter information could be materially misstated, could be materially misstated. But there is so many things that are very, very important as far as the professional doubt is concerned. The professional doubt. If you approach a transaction or an event with the mind of a questioning doubt, then be assured that one thing that you are going to be doing is that you are going to be there when you are going to be examining that item. If you examine a transaction and you become there as far as that transaction is concerned, rule number one we say is that it reduces, reduces one chances of overlooking, chances of overlooking suspicious circumstances suspicious circumstances. That means if you come across a transaction and you realize that that transaction could be materially misstated, if you have that particular questioning mind, the rule is very simple. Be that on that transaction. Otherwise, you're going to expose yourself to a high risk of maybe overlooking a transaction. You may say that transaction is okay and then you overlook something that was very, very important. And that's why we say one of the importances of what? Professional skepticism is that it reduces the chances of overlooking suspicious circumstances. Number two, it reduces the chances of making, we say, of overgeneralizing when forming conclusion. Overgeneralization when forming conclusions. Forming conclusions. I've had especially politician say that this part of people are very bad, this type of tribe is very, very bad, this type of maybe country is very, very bad. That is making, that is an overgeneralization of comments. When you make such overgeneralization or maybe statements, then automatically you overlook certain particular important matters. So we usually say, whenever you approach each and every item with a mind of questioning, or with a, a questioning mind, then you are not going to do what? To overgeneralize. You are going to reduce the chance of overgeneralizing when forming conclusion. You cannot make a general conclusion. You are just going to f try and fix each and every item or examine each and every item. The last item or the last important thing about professional skepticism is that it reduces the chances of forming or making faulty assumptions. Faulty assumptions about the subject matter about the subject matter information, about subject matter. So if you are examining an item and you feel that that item maybe is questionable, 
then there is a way you are going to be thorough on that item. And that means you're not going to form a wrong opinion. You're going to be maybe making a good now assumption, a reasonable assumption, or maybe a realistic assumption. So these are the three main, main factors that we consider when you're looking on professional skepticism. Professional skepticism, by definition, an attitude of a questioning mind, recognizing that the subject matter may be materially misstated. The importances of professional skepticism, number one, it reduces the chances of overlooking suspicious circumstances. Number two, it reduces the chances of overgeneralizing when forming conclusion. And number three, it reduces the chances of making faulty assumptions about the subject, the subject matter. That is one of the factors that is considered when you're doing what? When you're collecting evidence. Remember, we are still here in evidence, and we have said that when we are looking on evidence, a number of factors will come handy. One of the matters that we consider is what? Professional skepticism. The other item that we consider is what? Materiality. This one you must have known if you had covered maybe auditing in ATD or maybe in another particular level. That audit evidence, before you gather evidence, you have to look whether an item is what? Material. When an item is material, it means that that item is so significant and you're supposed to go ahead and gather evidence that is enough for that particular item. Thank <music> you.